Imagine this. On the radar screen inside the cockpit of an F-16, small green triangles are racing toward a blood-red block of enemy airspace. There is no pilot sitting in them. They are a pair of XQ-58A Valkyrie UAVs, punching through stacked layers of enemy air defenses. Behind them, the F-16s and F-15Es remain calm, circling in the safer airspace farther back. Their pilots no longer need to dive into a storm of surface-to-air fire. All they have to do is issue commands through the Link-16 data link. The dangerous work, the probing, the radar deception, the decoy runs, and the risk of being shot at is handed entirely to the Valkyries. This is not science fiction. It actually happened during a live fire exercise at Anglin Air Force Base in Florida in early July 2025. For the first time in history, F-16C and F-15E fighters directly controlled XQ-58A UAVs in the air, completing a milestone demonstration that drew intense attention across the defense world. As warfare moves deeper into the unmanned era, one question keeps returning. If the skies become increasingly filled with UAVs, what happens to the manned fighters that have dominated air combat for decades? Is it time for them to leave the stage, or is there another path forward? The exercise at Eglin delivered a very clear answer for the United States. Even inside a heavily jammed electromagnetic environment, with GPS denied and signals scrambled, the XQ-58A Valkyrie still demonstrated remarkable autonomy. It used integrated AI algorithms to plan its flight path in real time. It adjusted altitude, heading, and attack angles on its own. And it continuously transmitted battlefield data to the F-16s and F-15Es over the data link. Suddenly, the pilots in those cockpits had an extra pair of eyes and an additional brain flying ahead of them. These UAVs took on deep reconnaissance tasks, electronic attack missions, deception jamming operations, radar baiting runs, and even pushed into high-risk zones to force hidden air defense sites to reveal themselves. The manned fighters behind them became airborne command nodes. They issued orders, assigned tasks, and selected the precise moment to launch their main strikes. At the same time, they acted as airborne data relays, collecting information from the UAV swarm and forwarding it to command posts deeper in the rear. And here is where things get interesting. Even fourth-generation fighters like the F-16C and F-15E, aircraft often considered somewhat outdated compared to fifth-generation jets, once again became tactically relevant and far more lethal when paired with UAVs. Now imagine a simulated mission. At dawn, an enemy integrated air defense cluster has just completed its deployment along the outer ring of a coastal city. On the tactical display inside an F-16 cockpit, red symbols begin to appear. Two medium-range surface-to-air missile sites, a long-range early warning radar, and a forward command post disguised among a row of warehouses. Farther back, about 125 miles away, two F-16s and an F-35 are circling at high altitude in safe airspace. Ahead of them, three XQ-58A Valkyries launched earlier are flying low, closing in on the target area. The lead Valkyrie activates its active jamming suite. It climbs higher, deliberately stepping into the enemy radar beam and constantly changing direction to draw maximum attention. On the enemy's screen, a large, high-priority target instantly appears, rushing straight toward the center of the air defense cluster. At the same time, the other two Valkyries quietly shut down all electronic emissions and slip along the ridgelines and valleys on either flank. Their electro-optical sensors and synthetic aperture radar quietly sweep each suspicious sector. In less than a minute, the raw data is processed by the onboard AI. Launcher positions, command vehicles, and tactical radar sites are automatically tagged. The entire information package is compressed and sent over Link 16 to the F-16s and F-35 in the rear. Inside the F-35 cockpit, the pilot suddenly sees a crystal clear battle space picture. Every air defense site is boxed and numbered, complete with AI-generated weapon recommendations. He decides to prioritize the early warning radar and the forward command posts. 
With just a few taps on the touchscreen, the F-35 assigns one Valkyrie to drop guided bombs on the warehouse complex and orders another to fire a short-range cruise missile at the radar site. As the first bombs fall, the enemy air defense network finally realizes that the true threat is not the large jamming target out front. Surface-to-air missiles launch in volleys, locking onto the jamming Valkyrie. On the F-16's display, the green icon representing the decoy Valkyrie suddenly disappears. The lead UAV has been shot down. But at that exact moment, the early warning radar is destroyed, the forward command post takes a direct hit, and the fire control network is effectively knocked offline. In the brief window before the enemy can restore coordination, the F-35 seizes the opportunity. From outside the danger zone, it unleashes a wave of long-range missiles. The F-35 eliminates the remaining launchers one by one using coordinates fed by the two surviving Valkyries. When the engagement ends, only a few scattered red contacts remain on the map. The Valkyries went in first, soaking up the fire, marking the targets, and losing one airframe in the process. The man fighters never had to enter the most dangerous part of the battle space. It's only a simulation. But for those shaping the tactics of tomorrow, this is exactly how they envision the Valkyrie operating in a real war. And if even fourth-generation fighters can return to the front line in this way, using UAVs as the eyes, ears, and forward guns of the formation, how far can this model go when paired with fifth- and sixth-generation aircraft? That is the idea behind the Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program that the Pentagon is now pushing forward at full speed. Under this plan, each U.S. Air Force F-35 will eventually operate with a team of four to six UAVs. In this manned-unmanned combat system, the drone formation becomes a set of loyal escorts, absorbing enemy air defense fire first. It creates a narrow breakthrough window for the F-35, opening a breach that lets the F-35 slip through the defenses. Expanding the concept further, using a manned aircraft as an airborne launch platform and UAVs as the primary strike force bears a strong resemblance to the idea of a space carrier. Traditionally, people imagine a space carrier as a giant flying aircraft carrier capable of carrying a large number of manned fighters. The United States explored such concepts as far back as the Cold War. Yet, nearly half a century later, the largest aircraft humanity has ever built is still the AN-225. Lifting a platform comparable to a space carrier into the sky would require technology well beyond what current aerospace engineering can realistically support. And with today's capabilities, building such a craft is essentially impossible. But the Valkyrie trials suggest a different path, one that breaks completely from traditional assumptions. They show that a mothership does not need to be a massive manned platform with takeoff and landing systems. If it can deploy a large number of AI-enabled UAVs, it can achieve the same effect. In this model, UAVs are no longer tied to ground control stations. Their operational range and flexibility increase dramatically. Beyond serving as launch platforms, airborne motherships could also act as flying refuelers and ammunition depots allowing UAVs to rotate back for resupply and maintain constant pressure at the front. This space carrier model is exactly the direction the U.S. military is pursuing, and the XQ-58A Valkyrie sits at the center of that system. In 2023, the New York Times reported that the U.S. Air Force was preparing to field between 1,000 and 2,000 AI-assisted UAVs and lower the cost to $3 million per aircraft with the XQ-58A as a core component of that plan. The heart of this technology is artificial intelligence. Since the start of the Russia-Ukraine war, the effectiveness of UAVs on the battlefield has become widely visible. At the same time, nations developing their own drones have had to ask how to counter a weapon that is proving so aggressively effective. The answer emerged directly on the battlefield. Along the Russia-Ukraine front, both sides deployed dense layers of electronic warfare systems. Because most UAVs still depend entirely on ground control signals, these systems broadcast high power jamming that covers more than 90% of UAV communication frequencies, leaving many drones helpless the moment they cross the defensive line. To counter this, the U.S. military introduced the AI pilot concept. If a UAV's link is severed or GPS is heavily jammed, the AI pilot can continue flying the mission. 
Today, the AI pilot technology developed by Shield AI, a U.S. defense technology company co-founded in 2015 by a former U.S. Navy SEAL, has already demonstrated in exercises that it can control everything from small VPF drones to larger platforms, including the F-16 with surprising proficiency. Combined with the XQ-58A, this technology gives birth to a new, highly adaptive weapon system built for the next era of warfare. According to public information, the XQ-58A is a compact stealth UAV with an overall length of 30 feet, a wingspan of 27 feet, a maximum range believed to reach about 3,100 miles, and a top speed of Mach 0.85, similar to the cruise speed of the B-2 bomber. Aerodynamically, it uses a relatively conventional layout. A dorsal air intake and a small V-tail are not unusual features, yet they contribute effectively to the aircraft's low observable profile. As a UAV, it does not rely on a ground runway. It can launch from a fixed stand with rocket-assisted takeoff. This method aligns perfectly with the space carrier concept. No need for catapults or deck runways like naval carriers. The XQ-58A also uses a parachute recovery and inflatable airbags for landing, greatly improving reusability. Regarding armament, early expert analyses in 2019, based on external shape, estimated a payload of around 600 pounds, suitable for smart munitions like SDBs. But at the 2023 Miramar Air Show, the U.S. Marine Corps displayed an XQ-58A alongside two AIM-120 AMRAMs and a 500-pound JDAM in the same exhibit. This disproved earlier assumptions and showed that the XQ-58A not only has a larger payload capacity but also possesses meaningful air combat capability. Coincidentally, in recent years, the Marine Corps has sought rapid deployment capability and island-hopping missile tactics. Yet their main aircraft, the F-35B, is limited in weapons payload due to its lift fan design. The XQ-58A neatly fills that gap, matching the Corps' operational needs, raising the classic question of whether the requirement came first or the aircraft that inspired it. Beyond its combat suitability, the biggest reason the XQ-58A is favored by the U.S. military is its exceptional performance to cost ratio. In 2023, the developer announced a unit price of $6.5 million, a figure based on low production volume. If annual production reaches 50 aircraft, the cost drops to $4 million each. At 100 aircraft per year, the price falls below $2 million. Some argue that even $2 million is too expensive because on the Russia-Ukraine battlefield, a few thousand dollars worth of parts can be used to assemble an FPV drone capable of striking armored vehicles and fortifications with high volume and low loss. But that calculation is completely flawed. The impressive results achieved by small drones today are built on tens of thousands of failures, a classic case of survivorship bias. Countless FPV drones are quietly shot down during missions, but almost no one pays attention to them. The XQ-58A is different. It combines stealth, AI-assisted air combat capability, range, and multiple advanced functions into a single system, a true UAV of a new era. The missions it can perform cannot be compared through simple one-for-one -one exchanges with tanks. From deep reconnaissance of enemy positions to precision strikes against rear area command nodes all fall within its operational envelope. For perspective, it should be compared to Russia's Hunter UAV. Although the two platforms have similar performance indicators, the Hunter's unit cost reaches $18 million. Even mass production would not drop its price enough, still more than double that of the XQ-58A, placing the two on entirely different levels of cost-effectiveness. Interestingly, both the US and Russia share the same concept. Each designed these UAVs to serve as loyal wingmen for their manned fighters, SU-series jets for Russia and F-series jets for the US. Where they diverge is in its execution. While the XQ-58A has not yet been fully revealed, the Hunter's debut was far more abrupt and far more costly. On January 26, 2024, Russia announced that the Hunter had entered final testing and was expected to begin mass production in late 2024 at the Shigalov aircraft plant in Novosibirsk. Not long afterward, the Hunter appeared over the Russia-Ukraine battlefield and was shot down. 
Footage from the scene showed the drone destroyed by a missile fired from an Su-57. According to Russia, the UAV was undergoing combat evaluation tests but experienced multiple malfunctions. After the test concluded, it allegedly veered toward Ukrainian-controlled territory, forcing the Su-57 to destroy it to prevent the prototype from falling into enemy hands. What made matters worse was that the wreckage fell inside Ukrainian-controlled territory and was quickly recovered by rapid reaction units. With high cost and the risk of classified technology leaking, whether the hunter can continue mass production is now a major question. Judging from the incident, the U.S. military will likely be even more cautious as it advances development of the XQ-58A. In reality, beyond the United States and Russia, who have made notable progress in the field, several major military powers are also focusing on the concept of manned aircraft controlling UAVs. As early as April 2007, Kennedy Q worked with the UK Ministry of Defense using a prototype tornado fitted with an integrated avionics research system to command a formation of drones. It successfully demonstrated a manned aircraft controlling five UAVs simultaneously in airborne operations. By 2020, Boeing Australia introduced the first UAV within its air power teaming system, placing drones and manned aircraft inside the same combat formation, again proving the viability of the loyal wingman concept. This revolution is crucial for the U.S. military as it seeks to maintain its global air power dominance. Historically, America's overwhelming battlefield success has stemmed largely from its absolute air superiority advantage. But with modern air defense networks rapidly advancing, maintaining that advantage against peer adversaries is becoming increasingly difficult. If the U.S. continues relying solely on traditional defense industry thinking, simply adding more to manned aircraft, the cost-effectiveness curve will break down. In contrast, widespread UAV adoption combined with one pilot to many drones operations can dramatically increase situational awareness and firepower density while sharply reducing cost. AI further enables drones to penetrate air defense networks and shortens reaction cycles in real combat. With high flexibility and rapid tempo, UAVs are a perfect fit for the distributed operations doctrine the U.S. military is now pursuing. And this UAV-driven shift may fundamentally reshape U.S. combat power. However, even as nations rush to secure their place in the coming era of AI-driven drones, the technology still carries major unresolved issues. Who should hold command authority over UAVs in combat? Should AI make the decisions? Or should control stay with human operators in command centers or even higher-level military leadership in the rear? And when an AI-enabled UAV makes a mistake on the battlefield, who's responsible? The drone itself, the operator's judgment, or the decisions of the military command? Furthermore, the new generation of AI-driven UAVs represented by the XQ-58A has yet to undergo live combat training in more complex electromagnetic environments or harsh weather conditions. Once they enter real warfare, facing higher levels of jamming, their error rates could increase significantly. So, to everyone watching, how do you think the ethical challenges of AI-controlled UAVs should be resolved? That's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and drop a comment. Thanks for watching.